Hello there, my name is David Hillier and I'm going to give you a short video today on financing and whether financing can create value for a company. Now this lecture is part of an overall efficient markets lecture and we start off today by asking the question will efficient markets lead to value creation through fooling investors or through adding value. And we just introduce the overall idea in this short video and we go into uh, the idea of efficient markets in a lot more detail in future videos. So look on this as a quick introduction. So it's about creating value. How do you create value in a company? Well, let's start off by looking at investment decisions or capital budgeting decisions. There are many ways that managers and companies can create value through their investment decisions. And I have four cases here, but there are others that you could explore uh, in thinking about any company. So let's look at uh, these four just now. The first thing is unsatisfied demand. If you can satisfy a demand that hasn't been met somewhere in the market, then you will create value because the demand for your product will lead to sales of your product and the sales of your product will lead to revenue generation. So managers, as part of their day-to-day -day business, look for those opportunities where there may be an area or that no one else has looked at or no one else has thought about. And if you think you can put together a new product or a new service that will satisfy an unmet demand, then you can create definite value. Another way in which a company can create value is by stopping competitors in, uh, from getting involved in the market. And we talk about competitive barriers. Competitive barriers exist when there are very high fixed costs for entering into a market. Think about car manufacturing or smart, smartphone manufacturing. To even get into that business, you have to put together a massive product line, a massive value chain. Uh, you need to invest heavily in billions of pounds or billions of euros just in order to get a product um, on the manufacturing line. And so that stops a lot of new companies from getting involved. In this new internet world, new high tech world, there are better ways to get involved. And you see that many entrepreneurial firms and innovative firms are able to start off their business with very low levels of capital. But there are other industries where you need high levels of capital and that stops new entrants into the market. And if you can stop the competition, you create value by capturing the order flow and capturing the custom. The third way to create value is through cost efficiencies. If you can make something or do something much more efficiently or cheaper than your competitors, then you create value. You create value because the difference between your revenues and the costs, your profit, or the cash flow generated from your business will be higher because your costs are lower. And that's where the value is created. And the third, or the fourth way to create value is through being innovative, through coming out with a, a new product, a very innovative new product that creates its own sales. And you can think of many cases in the past few years, particularly in the technology area where a new product has been released. Take the iPhone, for example, or the iPad, and immediately you have a market. But that's quite risky because if we stick with the Apple example, the Apple Watch hasn't been particularly successful, not in comparison to the earlier products that Apple made. So spending some time, research and development may lead to a product, but it may not lead to a very successful product. All four of those examples 
are relating to investment. But we're going to be looking at financing decisions. Going back to the very beginning of the lecture, or the lecture series in corporate finance, we said that there were three parts to finance. There's the investment decision, there's a the financing decision, and then there is short-term capital management or liquidity management. So we're now going to be talking about financing decisions. And the question is, can you create similar value from financing decisions? And this is what we're going to, to look at. It is possible to create value from financing decisions, but it's not easy. And it's not easy because of the size of the market. If you think about you running your business, you can identify different potential projects that are out there that you might be able to create value on. But if you look at financing decisions, financing decisions, you're going to be trying to raise capital for your investments. And to raise capital, you have to engage with investors, potential investors, stock market investors, banks. And investors have many more opportunities in which to invest than a company has to invest its own money. Think about a normal stock market investor. They can invest in bonds. They can invest in equities. They can invest in any number of equities. They can invest in any number of bonds. You can invest in currencies, derivatives, so many op opportunities. And that means that for you as a company, to create value from financing, you really need to do something quite special to get that value. And there's three ways in which you can do that. Now, the first one is you could potentially fool investors. If investors don't have as much information about your product as you have, then you could present that product in such a way in which maybe the risk of the product is maybe underestimated, or the cash flows expected to be generated from the project are overestimated. Now, clearly, if you do that, then that is an unethical decision. But managers may feel that they can outthink the investors in terms of their decision-making. Now, research shows that it's actually too difficult to do that. But there may be some markets in the world where it may be possible, maybe in emerging markets. The second way in which you can create uh, value through financing is through negotiating with governments. Governments may give you advantageous or preferential financing opportunities to encourage you to set up your business in a particular area in a country. So let's say, for example, there are countries that are just coming out of conflict, um, that have gone through some serious recent difficulties. You could think about Iraq, you could think about Afghanistan, potentially Libya. In those situations, then uh, a government may persuade, try to persuade companies to set up business there. But it could also be in, say, poor areas of the European Union. Uh, I know that in the UK there are very poor areas and so governments or regional authorities may give advantageous financing to companies who want to set up business in that area. And that then generates jobs, it generates opportunities for people who uh, will be living in that area and that can be good. And I'm going to give a little example in a minute of how that uh, may work in practice. And then the third way in which you can create value is through financial engineering. With financial engineering, you create new securities that may give some characteristic advantages to investors that investors haven't been able to capture as yet. Now, these may be tax-efficient securities. Tax-efficient securities have been very popular in recent years and because of the way in which economies are grow going, tax-efficient securities are, are starting to be, um, I suppose, checked very carefully by governments. But the big consultancy firms earn an awful lot of income from advising on taxation. And investment banks, investment advisors, work with companies to 
construct securities that will make them tax efficient for investors. So it's possible that you could create a unique security that is attractive to investors, investors haven't been able to invest in anywhere, and that then could create excess demand in relation to the supply of that security. And we call that financial engineering. So three different ways in which you can create value in financing. And let me go to an example with the subsidies. Let's just look at this. So a government has offered your company a discounted loan of 2 million euros. And the annual coupon, the interest rate that they're charging is 5%. But for your company, if you were to go to the markets, you would only be able to get a 10% yield to maturity because you're riskier. So the government's encouraged you to move your operations to a particular area and they're saying, well, in return, we'll give you financing that is below market rates. So how is how does that create value then? Well, the yield to maturity of your bond, that's the discount rate that you would apply to the bond is 10%. But the coupon that you're paying, the, the money that you're paying back in the form of interest payments is only 5%. So if you borrow 2 million euros, and we're assuming here it's just a five-year bond, if you borrow 2 million euros and the coupon is 5%, then 5% of 2 million is 100,000. So you pay 100,000 every year for five years, and you discount that at 10%. You receive 2 million, the present value of this cash flow stream is 1,620,000 euros. So you've created value from that financing decision of 379,000 euros. So you're creating value through financing. So what does this say about efficient markets? Well, markets can either be inefficient or they can be efficient. And we're going to be exploring that in future videos. If a market is inefficient, then it means that the information that is flowing to investors is not complete. It's not the full set of information. It may also mean that investors are not particularly sophisticated, or a large group of investors are not sophisticated and they're influencing prices. In that situation, managers can take advantage of these inefficiencies and create value for themselves. However, if a market is efficient, then investors will have all the information available to accurately, accurately price securities and investors will be sophisticated. I'm going to explore that in future videos in a lot more detail to look at the what factors are required for an efficient market. But when a market is efficient, you can't create value by fooling investors. You can only create value by adding cash flows and adding wealth to your investors' investment in your company. So very quick overview of financing decisions and whether they create value. And I've linked that to efficient and inefficient markets. I hope you join me for some future videos. Thank you very much.